Hi, I'm Jim Bennett from AAA Metal Supplies, and for the next few minutes, I'll show you how simple it is to install a professional looking DIY stainless steel stair handrail. Let's get started. I like to measure the stair treads and stair riser height first, making sure they are fairly uniform. Using a straight edge or a string line, I can check the alignment of the stringer of the stairs and leave allowance for any irregularities. You will now need to mark out what I call phantom treads on your landing so you can position your upper and lower stair posts correctly. After this, decide where you would approximately like the bottom and top post of your lower flight of stairs to be positioned. I find it best to slip the post onto the tall base plate and position it on the stairs. For this demonstration, I'm going to use stainless steel countersunk screws, but you may wish to use stainless bugle screws or bolts if you are mounting onto concrete stairs. You can cover your base plate fasteners with a cover plate if you wish. Trace around the tall base plates and mark out the base plate fastener holes. Pre-drill and pre-screw the base plate screws. Hopefully all your treads will all be of the same width and likewise all your risers will be the same height which will allow you to position the base plates the same distance from the tread nosing each time. If for some reason your stairs do not have uniform risers, you may have to slightly adjust the base plate distance from the nosing by making it closer to the nosing edge of the tread or closer to the riser. By doing so, you will increase or decrease the angle of the handrail. Position the tall base plate for the upper post the same distance from the nosing of the stairs. This will be on the landing phantom tread. Next slip lower post and upper posts onto the tall base plate. You may also attach the adjustable saddle to the lower post and the shortened fixed saddle to the upper post. Depending on the length of your flight of stairs, you may also wish to make provision for installing an intermediate post. Current building codes require an intermediate post to be installed if the overall span is greater than two meters. In this demonstration, the distance between the upper and lower post is greater than two meters and the intermediate post will need to be installed. You will now need to select which tread you will mount your intermediate post on, but be aware that it may not always be in the middle of your flight of stairs. I don't usually attach the intermediate post, so final adjustments can be made. It is now time to connect the upper flight of stairs to the landing. On the marked out phantom tread, directly below the upper flight of stairs, Position the tall base plate the same distance from the tread nosing as per the other base plates. Mark the tall base plate hole positions and pre-drill and pre-screw as before. Then place the landing post over the tall base plate. It is now time to cut the horizontal joining handrail for the two posts mounted on the landing. As a general guide, measure the inside distance between your landing posts and add 15 millimeters onto this measurement for the correct handrail length. Next, cut the handrail tube to the desired lengths using either a metal cutting saw or a drop saw with an abrasive blade. After cutting the required lengths and filing the burrs off, polish out the burn marks using a 3M scour or similar. Never use steel wool as this will contaminate the stainless and cause discoloration later on. Attach the adjustable elbows 
to both ends of the tube and sit it on the landing posts. To help hold the adjustable elbows in position and onto the fixed post saddles, I find it handy to use 300mm electrical cable ties. Next prepare to position the final top stair post by measuring the same distance from the nosing and attaching the tall base plate as before. Again, you may need to adjust the final position of this post, so just temporarily pin it onto the stair tread with one screw in case it needs to be moved forward or backward to change the angle of the handrail. Place the upper stair post on the tall base plate and attach the adjustable saddle. From the shoulder of the adjustable elbow, measure the desired length of the upper angled handrail. Remember to allow for any overhang past the post for end scrolls or end caps etc that finish the tube. Attach the upper handrail tube to the adjustable elbow and cable tie it to the post saddle. For the lower angled handrail, Measure the distance required whilst allowing for any overhang past the post for finishing with end caps or end scrolls, etc. Cut the handrail tube and cable tie it onto the bottom stair post adjustable saddles. First start by levelling up the top post landing, making sure it is level in both vertical planes. Also make sure the handrail adjustable elbow is positioned correctly because if it is twisted to the side it will make your handrail look crooked. When the adjustable elbow is in the correct position mark it with a permanent marker in relation to the tube position. From the bottom sight your handrail and if it looks straight you'll be ready for attaching your post saddles to the handrail. When you are satisfied with the level of the posts and how your handrail looks, mark the saddle holes with a permanent marker. Remove the handrail tube and centre punch the holes to be drilled. Drill out the handrail using a suitable size sharp drill and some drilling compound to make drilling easy. Replace the handrail back onto the post saddles and use a stainless steel drilling screw to attach the saddles to the handrail. If you decide to use end caps, these may be tapped into position, or if using scroll ends, line them up and permanently attach them using a small stainless pop rivet. To fix your post to the tall base plates, start by marking, centre punching and drilling a 3.5mm hole for the pop riveting of the posts to the base plates. This will greatly stabilise the posts. The last thing to do is to clean up your handrail by wiping away the permanent marker lines with methylated spirits or similar and giving it a good protective polish. I hope this instructional video has been of help. It is only intended as a guide as each set of stairs is different and slight adjustments may be required to suit your own situation. Please don't hesitate to contact me at aaametalsuppliers.com.au AAA Metal Suppliers for all your stainless wire and balustrade requirements.